Hi, you all coaches, and welcome to my podcast, No Coaches, No Boxing. I hope that every one of you is in a great shape and ready for the next episode, which is relationship between patience and pressure. Stay with me. Do not go anywhere after the music. Here we are. Welcome back to you all coaches. I'm super happy and pumped to speak about the next topic, which as I already said, is the relationship between patience and pressure. Wow. For me, this is a very tough topic to discuss as for each one of us, it's very difficult. It doesn't uh, matter how much patient we are because until we are around our uh, limit, you know, it's okay, it's easy. So it's not even worth it to discuss. But what's happening when we are close to our limit and things are start to be very tough and emotions are stepping on the table then psychological management it start to be you know it's starting to be very complicated and this is why the friend pressure <laughs> is there knock 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 knocking on the door asking you for some attention which we should not give any of it because when we give attention to pressure and that's where we open the door to troubles <laughs> so uh, coaches yeah patience our our job requires a lot of patience because we go through a lot of different and, and difficult times during our work. We are preparing people and we are leading them to fight into uh, a ring and, you know, the responsibility is on us and we have lots of responsibilities to prepare the boxers psychologically, mentally, physically, technically, strategically, all these areas. And then, you know, we have the responsibility of make everything work smooth and no one is considering that we have emotions too. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, we're, we're, we're not robots. We are human beings. And most of it, we are full of emotions. We are really into a storm of emotions because we feel our responsibilities, but also we grew our boxers, our athletes. And we have this very close relationship, as you know, as parents. So we see our, let's say, boxers slash <laughs> son or daughters going into the ring and we want to protect them by all means. So anything happening to them is affecting our emotions. And there is where start the difficulties of our job. Because it's more than personal. The attachment that we have with our boxers is very deep in an emotionally point of view. So what's happening? We are so involved that we must work so much on our patient, patience sorry, and emotion and psychological management because otherwise we will just freak out at the very first moment but we cannot afford this because we need to stay focused because we are leading our boxers and we need to stay strong for them because if we lose it what will happen to them so you see it's always our job is always a domino effect now pressure 
our job is always under pressure, especially when we turn into the competition, when we step into the competition. We start and there is expectations and we need to run our team, which is not only one boxers, we will have more boxers and we need to care about everything. The pressure is there because we know that there is expectations. We know that we have responsibilities and everything is carried on our shoulders. There is moments where we might disagree with results, moments where we are not happy about performances. Maybe we are not happy about what the, 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 the public is shouting from, uh, f- f- from the seats, everything, you know. So, and all is on us. So it's very clear that patient, patience, again, sorry, <laughs> has to be something mastered by each one of us because we cannot lose our patience. We must be focused. Focus is our main goal. And don't forget that even when we are focused and we don't show nothing like eyes cold inside, wow, there is an eruption of emotions and it doesn't matter what's happening outside, we have to be stone cold. Otherwise, we might create more problems. And instead of teaching to our boxers how should we behave in such moments, we will just show that we are not ready to be in this particular field. Because emotionally and psychologically, we still weak. So I hope that also this episode will uh, be heard by people that have no idea what means being a coach. You know, this is a journey, a very tough journey. And we, we fight uh, against ourselves to learn, to improve The coaches have, you know, the ego problem that once we learn a lot of stuff, then everyone starts thinking that they are the best in the world and this will just stop them to improve and also put them in a position of bad relationship with other coaches, colleagues and all the other officials involved in our environment because this kind of arrogance that will of course follow the ego will just draw a very bad path and this also will reflect and affect all the coaches community because everyone will say ah you know coaches ah no 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 no. we don't want to deal with coaches and this is where i'm i'm trying to fight to help you all to understand how important we are that's why you know see no coaches no boxing that's what that's what we are you know we should lead our sport we should lead our environment and all the things that are moving inside and around you know in a circle we should be the strength the force that really gives movement to everything but positive movement now coming back to patience how can we develop patience (laughs) it's it's a a question a one million dollar question you know, to develop patient, we need to work constantly on a daily basis on ourselves. And the more we are open-minded and w- the more we will be uh, capable to recognize when we are almost close to the limit and when we lose it because we will be losing it. Th- this is why, this is how we, we build patient. When we truly push it to the limit, we lose it. And if we are open-minded and smart, we will recognize, oh, here I lost it. What should I do now to improve? Because this is nothing. I, I cannot afford to have this low you know, level of patience. I will just 
boom, explode in 20 seconds when I'm in the ring. I cannot afford this kind of stuff. So if I'm open-minded to also self-assess myself once I'm in training, whilst I'm in dealing with the, co- the, the, the boxers, with other coaches, with the families, or uh, running the gym, whatever I have to do, even in my family, uh, the relationship with every member of my family, people around, people that are, you know, um, at the market, at the shop, at the bar, at the restaurant. Every moment is an opportunity to train and improve because we are dealing with things. And every time we have relationship of any kind, there is always an emotional and psychological engagement. There we can see how much strong we are. An example, let's say, this is a pretty good example. This is not boxing related. Let's say we are at home and we call uh, some workers that they have to do some specific work at home and they start driving us crazy. Uh, first of all, to take the appointment, you know, no answering to the phone. And then we want this because we trust them. But then for some reason, they are not answering to the phone. Something happened to that. But then we start getting, you know, mm, and then the, the, the days are coming. Then you have the, the date that you want to finish your work in the house because then you know that you have other commitments. And so you are start freaking out because you think that maybe, yes, maybe they will show up and then maybe they will do the things all in a row, you know, so you are not happy already thinking that the result, it might not be what you want because they did it in a rush because instead of coming when they were supposed to, they did in another way and they're trying to finish on the day that you uh, that you ask because then it will not be possible for you to be in the house because you will be in a competition let's say nah, and then you start freaking out so there you have as always two options either you freak out and you lose or either you improve and you win because if you improve there not only will benefit the the purpose of 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 this um, meeting with these workers because you will have the work done and also you will be calm you will not have any stress and you will not transfer any stress to your family because here we are talking about now something in the family environment the house and also the workers, at the end, they will try to do their best to do as better as possible because they will also will be affected by your positive approach. And also, beside the benefit in your uh, personal environment, we you will benefit into your professional and general um environment because then when you will go to the gym and deal with difficulties and with the daily stress um, things you know you will be another level and same how much you improve in the gym on on the patient's level all your life will benefit so everywhere you have possibilities of train yourself we need to remind this because it's not just remember it's not just i'm patient when i'm the gym when i am when i'm after my boxers no you need to be you need to manage to be you so you need to really reach a level where is you let's see where i'm talking about gabriele i'm if i'm patient i must be patient in everything otherwise i'm not so it's just a matter of time, a matter of button. The moment, you know, uh, I think I'm very super patient and I will be in a competition and bam, someone find that button and click that button, bam, all of a sudden I will explode. And so it's not good. So um, the really good training for us is train and try to push ourselves and always self-assess. Self-assessment is very useful because, first of all, make us way much, way much mature. Because if I can self-assess myself honestly, without you know any 
cheating and saying, yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. No, 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 really, pam. Self-called assessment with the only purpose to grow up, to improve in these particular areas. And then, of course, self-assessment will be useful in any areas of our life. But in this particular now we are, that we are discussing, this would be amazing because I recognize and certainly will not stop. Then another very important step would be the moment you feel that your behavior is leading you to the point where you have the opportunity to improve, there you can ta 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 here inside of yourself thanks to the self assessment attitude this red alert this red alert ta 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 that is telling you hey 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 look look you are about to explode now you have again two options either you improve or either you ruin it and then again you are at the starting point so thanks to that you recognize yourself and you recognize your weaknesses and you recognize your limits and then there you can say yes i reach my limits not ah i reach my limit no yes i reach my limit i can beat it yeah you see it's always a matter of point of view if i see my limit like an opportunity to reach the sky let's say the limit you know not because we see the limit sometimes like something bad it's wrong it's just also the use of the words sometimes that mislead completely the whole thing let's say limit limit is the top of something yes all right let's say we have a mountain and we want to go on top of the of, of this so that's the limit because no, uh, you cannot go up there more so reaching the limit there it's a conquer yes because you reach the top now when we reach the top of our limits there is the opportunity it means that we climb till the top and now we can try because boom to fly over and be better so limit is not something bad it's a goal to reach our limit so we can improve it and boom boom and raise it raise it raise it raise it it's very important and you know if we work this way i'm sure coaches that we can improve and you know this shouldn't be something um like a hard fight where we get angry no 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 something that really studying ourselves like when we are trying to improve our own technique or our own cardio it's the same emotions and psychological uh, and, and, and psychology you know and our psychological uh, traits must be worked because we can improve them we can improve emotionally and psychologically working you know on ourselves and trying to understand where are our limits so we can skyrocket the line of our limits and we can be better and stronger and doing also this this way of working will affect automatically all our areas in life because all the people in all the different environment family uh, private time work time which is the gym and coaching everyone will look at you and will see how you are behaving your attitude to life this is the best lesson ever remember this i i will never stop saying leading by example when we lead by example there is nothing else needed to say we already said it all and all the people see and then when they think about you and they think about themselves they say oh but i, I want to be like coach i want to be like daddy i want to be like mommy you know i want to be like my brother i want to be like my, like my like my sister so uh, uh, whoever you are you can lead by example a lot of people or when you find yourself in a very tough situations where really emotions and and 
and, and your psychological level uh, are both um, challenged by a particular situation, the people that are involved in this situation, they are there and they will see how you react. And there, if you behave with a positive attitude, trying, you know, to fix things, work on yourself and trying the, the always the positive approach, people will be, wow, yes, we received this. And I, I think it's a great thing, you know, it's powerful. We can use it big time because as coaches, we can always coaching no stop. Yeah, no stop. Because whatever we do, we are teaching. Remember that everyone is looking at the coach 24 hours a day because we cannot just switch off. The coach is a leader. The coach is an influencer. So whatever we do, wherever we go, the people will look at you as the coach. So the coach went to take a coffee at the bar. The coach went to order at the restaurant. The coach was uh, getting the petrol from the petrol station. How did you speak with the people there? Were you rude or because just you were upset and you you th you thought that you were um, um, like the, you could be rude with all the people just because you had a bad day, or you had a bad day, very bad day, but you still you still being kind with anybody because you are great and the level of patience that you build is super high and strong because you know what's happening you know that your actions will affect the life of people that's why we are different that's why we are coaches every action taken by us will affect the life of people the way we teach will affect the life of people the way we speak will affect the life of people. The way we move, the way we behave, the way we think will affect the life of people. Yes, because we are leaders. We are leaders. I forgot the S. <laughs> you know. So, coaches, I would be very interested about what you think about pressure, about patience. As always, remember that you can drop your comment um, in, in, the, in, the, in the comments area where, where I'm asking you. Uh, there is only one question which is very important for me where, where I'm asking you to tell me what do you think about the episode. And particularly in this one, if you reach to this point, I would really love to see your opinion about the patients. And if you have also uh, other point of view uh, regarding how to build and improve our patience would be very nice to see it in the comments. So, coaches, I gave you some more uh, food for thoughts even today, and I think that we 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 reach you know some point of understanding regarding this because if I go. To explain you more why I took the patience, because again, patient will turn and fall into behavior, into the behavior of the coaches, which is, you know, now you know me pretty well right now. The behavior of the coaches for me is one of the most important topic and one of the most important skills because we bear on our shoulders not only the life of our boxes, but only also the um, all the coaches community when one of us does something wrong this really boom as again domino effect will go on all the coaches so we have all this we have also this responsibility we need to behave perfect we need to show to everyone that we are the teachers we are the teachers, not, 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 you know, we're not just kids that they have no idea how to behave, how to control their emotions, how to be psychologically fit to be in a leading position, 
To be in a leading position, we must be psychologically strong, fit for that position. Otherwise, we need to be sure that someone else will be there and not us if we are not ready. Same as when we prepare a boxer. If they are not ready, there is no point to drop in, in the ring just to ruin a potential person that could really do well. So we need to really calculate every single step always. All right, coaches, I'm very happy that we, we discuss this topic today and I hope that I gave you some good ideas to work on it. I think that I, I, I did like to, to discuss this because it's very interesting. It's, it's very nice. I like it a lot. All right, coaches, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for the support. I truly appreciate it. I love you all. Do not forget. And as always, boom, nailed it.